all right hello everyone and peace of christ all of you before we start you know like uh, uh, i wasn't really going to go live and i said let us you know get this guy busted now we have two abduls and two abduls will not make allah god and will not make muhammad a prophet the muslims are so desperate they cannot find their prophet in the quran so they try to find him in the bible no problem i mean try it's good to try doesn't hurt doesn't hurt uh, there's one person I need to ban here too uh, here we go we just did when the Muslim they try to find their God in the Bible it's a good sign because that's mean our book is a true book and their book is a fraud when a Muslim he could not find a proof that Muhammad is a prophet depend in the Quran alone and then even they say that the Bible is corrupt, and then they try to find in the book which is supposedly corrupt, what supposedly will prove that Muhammad is a prophet. So how a corrupt book will prove your prophet to be a prophet? That must be a corrupt proof. So it is really funny, silly, stupid religion. When you are desperate, bankrupt, you look for your pennies, and this is their pennies. So today this guy, this guy he is desperate to get some Abdul, he is I think from France. And uh, you know this is the only way to make money these days. Say anything good about Muhammad and people will subscribe and will support you. Muslims will support anyone, speak good about Muhammad, even if you are a cockroach. So he got this guy and this guy supposedly he claimed that he speak Hebrew and you can tell he is not even reading Hebrew. You know they use a websites like those. And this is how they read. The same as the Muslim when they call me and they claim that they are reading Arabic. And you can tell even his Arabic is funny and dummy. So let us go and see what this guy he have to say to us and we go from there. Remember the topic is that Muhammad is in Isaiah 42. All right. And he actually gives the Arabic word Deen as being the closest in meaning to the Hebrew. See, they found the word Deen is the closest to the Hebrew. You stupid idiot. The Hebrew and the Arabic. Arabic is not a language. Arabic is born of mix of languages. And number one mix is the Aramaic. So you are silly again. What is Deen? What a big deal, guys. We are close. We have the word Deen. Sh shall I tell you how many words we use the same? I mean, Arabic is exist before Muhammad, you idiot. What does it have to do with Islam? Like, is, it, is Muhammad is the one who created the Arabic language? Is that word used by the pagan before Muhammad or not? How this is how silly and this I mean you did not even start and you are you are, you are making me uh, uh, vomit. This is how silly you are. This is the most closest word to the word Quran. Deen. Aha. Hey. Oh. Wow. Okay. So wow. Mishpat and the other guy says wow. Like <laughs> I mean, this one made him say, wow, you know, this is the close word in Hebrew, the word Deen. The other guy says, wow. But this is a word we use for centuries before even Muhammad was exist. What does this have to do with Islam? The word Deen means religion. So those who used to kiss the black stone, they have a Deen. Those who worship Jesus, they have a Deen. Those who worship the the the, the, uh, 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 the God of the Jews, they have a Deen. Those who worship the star, this is Deen. Deen means religion, you idiot. What's what is that? Wow. The other guy said, wow. <laughs> the Goyim Yotzi, uh -huh, the Goyim. to the Gentiles, uh -huh. he will cause to come out. The verb is he feel, it's causative. We can say, he will bring okay. Deen to the Ummiyin. Why the Ummiyin, they don't have a Deen? They don't. Look carefully what this guy he said. He just destroyed all the Muslim claim. He said that the word Ummiyin does not mean they do not know how to write, how to read. They are the Gentile. How many times we said to you, this is how it is. And how many times the Muslim, they say Christian princes line that the word Ummi does not mean a person do not know how to write, how to read. It means the Gentile. So he just admitted that his, the people of Muhammad, they are Gentile and his prophet is a Gentile. That's wonderful. Continue. The Gentiles. Ummiyin means Gentiles. Correct. He will bring divine religion to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And we have confirmation in the Quran, 61.9 of the Quran, huwa alladhi arsala rasulahu bilhuda wa deen al -haq. <sighs> this is the proof you have let us go to the verse so people will laugh 
So he is the one who sent Rasulahu bil huda wa din al haq. And by the way, your Arabic is broken like a, a boy from Af Afghanistan. Everybody will laugh right away from the verse you just quoted for us. Uh, who are the Arsala Rasulahu Biddin? Who are who are who? It is he. Who sent his messenger? He. He who? And this is, exists everywhere in the Quran, by the way. Not only in chapter 61, verse number 9. Chapter 48, verse 28 says the same. Chapter 9, verse 33 says the same. And this is a proof to us that the Quran is written by a stupid idiot because you do not need to repeat the same thing all over. But let us go with him. It is he, he chose this one, 61.9. It is he who sent. It is he who. It is he who. Here always we see the stupidity of the author of the Quran. The Muslim they say that Allah he speak about himself as the second person or third person. But that will not make, make any sense because this guy, he always say in, in a stupid way, which means obviously the author is speaking about Allah. Their intention to extinguish Allah light by between two brackets by blowing. <laughs> what the heck? With their mouth is okay. Who is talking that? Who is saying that? Allah. How Allah, he says their purpose to, to extinguish the light of Allah when well, he is Allah. And then he continues saying, it is he, and the verse before it is the same. If you read verse number seven, actually, you will see that the idiot who chose this verse, he is a stupid. Why? Because it says that Allah guide not those who do wrong. Is being pagan wrong? Yes. So how you can bring deen to those who they are wrong? If Allah is saying Allah guide not those who do wrong. Are we following people? Are we following? He just to choose a verse. That verse get him busted. Allah will not guide. He said that Muhammad will bring a religion to who? To the pagan. Okay, wonderful. The same chapter he chose, not me. He said 61, we went to 61. He said verse number 9, we just read verse number 9 and read the verses before it, two verses before it. Verse number 7 saying, And Allah guide not those who do wrong. Is being a pagan wrong? I want Muslim to answer. Is being a pagan wrong? And by the way, I start to blocking people who say things will make my blood boil from now on, especially females. Anyone who says something sitting in the chat, I will block you. I have no time for stupidity. And Allah guide not those who do wrong. But you might ask why I'm saying females, because there are some females here that are coming to fight with each other and you know make a drama. So those, we will block them. Anyone will go out of the topic, I will block you. you. Male or female, enough is enough with dummies. Isn't it enough we have Muhammad, the biggest dummy in the earth? So Allah guide not those who do wrong. And here you ask yourself, what a stupid religion then? And what is the idea that Muhammad is a prophet if this God will not guide who do wrong? So Allah will guide what? The one who do right? <laughs> Shall we stop? We are done. We refuted them. We do not even need to continue about Muhammad in Isaiah 42. <laughs> oh boy. What 
a stupid idiot. Anyone will use a bad name but in the in the in the chat. If your name is bad, we will block you too. All right. So and Allah will guide not those who do wrong. But this guy in the video saying that Muhammad he will broke the religion, divine religion to the pagan. But Allah will not guide the pagan because they are doing wrong. Is worshiping another god beside God is it the biggest sin in Islam? Yes, it is. If we go to different verse, just to show you how silly those people. This is the most stupid city cult, and it is the easiest to defeat. You know, I can have a like a hard time with somebody's an atheist. He, you know, he say he was a monkey, and then I, I say, okay, I, I, I say to him, I surrender. That's it. You know, I cannot debate you. You are a monkey. You won. Okay, just go a shapanzi. But a Muslim trying to debate, he have the most horrible, stupid book ever. When Muhammad he tried to bring the deen, which the guy he mentioned, to those who don't believe in Allah, Allah said to him, are you going to guide the one who Allah misguide and deceive? <laughs> Unbelievable. So listen carefully. Muhammad, he went to those who don't believe in the true God. And he said to them, I want you right now to believe in the true religion, the divine religion, the one come with the black stone. We kiss it and we lick it. And it's in the shape of a vagina. The God who promised you an endless penis and a big ass and women vagina, whatever you use it, Allah is going to fix it. And you don't be confused about using it again. It's going to be virgin. That God, he said to him, <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you, would you guide those who Allah, and look at the first start, Allah throw away, what it says throw away, it says Allah, those who Allah deceived, are you going to guide those who Allah he deceived, those who Allah he deceived, nobody can bring them back to the faith, or they can, can make them fixed, if you change the translation here, Or the translator, sorry. <laughs> because in Islam, there's something funny about translators. When you translate the tra you change the translator, you change the whole Quran. <laughs> My friends, the one who come in the chat, you know, as long as we are started already, don't say Shalom, Christian Prince. It's too late. Okay, like, come on, you imagine you enter the classroom and the teacher is talking and now you are saying to him, Assalamu Alaikum, you are acting like Muhammad now. So listen carefully, don't be like a, my cousin who went to the movie, he spent the day saying Assalamu Alaikum, and when the movie is over, he was not yet done shaking hands and saying Assalamu Alaikum. So you enter the chat room and we are talking, avoid Shalom to you, it's not important. When Allah, he says, do you want to guide those who Allah deceived? The Muslim here, they are using send astray. How Allah he sent people astray? I thought the one who sent astray is the devil. Isn't it? Who is the one who sent people astray? Is the devil. Even the Quran confirmed that. But the Quran in the same time confirmed that the one who really sent astray is Allah. And not only that, Allah is saying to the funny Muhammad, and whoever Allah deceive, you will never find for him a way of guidance. So how does dummy he says to us that Muhammad was a person who bring a religion to the pagan when the pagan are gone astray by the act of Allah? We did not even start the video, my friend. It was just two seconds you mentioned something, and we have we spent 20 minutes laughing. So what will happen if we play all the video? We cannot do that. I will play a little bit of your video, so we will have enough comedy, and then we continue.
He, he it is, God is the one who sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth, the mishpat. Hmm. That's 62.9 of the Quran. Mm -hmm. He it is who sent his messenger, who he it is who sent among the Gentiles mm -hmm. a messenger. And of course, so, you know, when the Muslim, they confirm now suddenly that Muhammad was sent among the Gentile. And by the way, he did not continue reading the rest because it says one of them. And the reason he did not read the rest because it's very embarrassment. I will show you why he did not read the rest. <clears throat> it says here, he it is who, which is funny again, Allah keeps saying he it is who. <laughs> Obviously, the author of the Quran is stupid. It is he who sent among the Gentile, as he said, a messenger among themselves. So he was a Gentile too. He was a Gentile too. Then we need to ask ourselves a question. Didn't we just show you that Allah guide not those who do wrong? Chapter 61, verse number 7. And isn't it wrong to be a Gentile? Which means not to worship Allah. So Allah guide not those who they are Gentile. How Allah will choose Muhammad to be guide or guided. Here we see that Islam is a very stupid cult. Muhammad, he could not explain why people don't believe in him. Muhammad, he said that if 10 Jews only believe in me, the rest of the Jews will believe, which means it was a big failure. Not even 10 Jews believe in him. When it's come to Jesus, he, he said, I came for the sick, not for the healthy. That makes sense. Because guidance needs to the one who's lost, not the one who's not. The one who's not is not lost. So why do you want to give him GPS? <laughs> he have it already. So Islam is a stupid cult. But because those people are so desperate, they help us to expose this desperate cult who their prophet cannot be found in their book to be a prophet, but he can be found in our book, which is amazing how powerful our book is to the point that those pagan people who they are proud about their God, supposedly, suddenly they are proud about the God of the Old Testament, not about the Quran. So you have the famous verse 7157. Exactly. Those who follow the messenger, the mm -hmm. Gentile prophet, okay. who is mentioned in the Torah and in the Gospel. Mm -hmm. So it says there the one who mentioned in the Torah and the Gospel. The verse says the one who is mentioned in the Torah and the Gospel. Okay. Where? Where it says that? This is the verse you quote for us. This guy is adding words to the verses. We just heard him saying, it is he who sent the Gentile messenger, which his name is mentioned in the gospel, where it says that, here we go, this is your translation. Where we can find that. But you know, they knew that those Muslims, they worship anyone. He say anything good about Muhammad, so nobody is going to go and read. But that will not work for us. We are here to love. We are not here, by the way, to refute you, my friend. You are just silly, stupid idiot. A person, he's an ex-Muslim, he sent me this video. This is why I decided to come. This person, he just left Islam, uh, I think maybe last week or 10, 10 days ago. You remember life on air? He's the one who sent me this. Uh, and he said to me, those videos are frustrating. I said, why? <laughs> they are funny. <laughs> Continue. That's verse one. Okay. So all this time he spent, this is an hour. This is 55 minutes. 
This is why I, I, I have to jump the video. This guy, he talked too much. He say nothing. This is after 55 minutes. This is verse 1. Thank you. So the, the title is Muhammad in Isaiah. It took him 55 minutes to read verse number 1. I hope it's not going to the same for verse number 2. Continue. Verse 2, it says, Lo yitz'aq velo yisa velo yashmi. You know what? I have a challenge for you. To call me life and to say those words and your eyes is a close. Or you know what? I will show you in the screen a verse of my choice and you read it. Stop using the Jewish website which is pronouncing words in Hebrew because obviously you do not know Hebrew, you do not know Arabic. I mean, this guy, he speaks a little bit of Arabic, but his Arabic is broken the same as my flip-flap shoes. And I could not find one in Walmart. The market is empty, thanks to, you know, Joe Biden. So, you know, like, okay, I'm going to read Hebrew right now. I became, suddenly, I became a Hebrew uh, uh, expert. So I will, I will read, and now I became a Hebrew, uh, uh, you know, scholar. Read for us, please. Tell us what verse number two is saying. Give us, give us the cheese. He shall not cry out, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the streets. Meaning outdoors. Ibn Ezra says. Ibn Ezra said. The Muslim they ask Ibn Ezra, and Ibn Ezra said, "Okay, what Ibn Ezra said?" <laughs> this was okay. so that people would would flock to him okay. and not flee from him. So he have to be very nice, very gentle, and very kind. And look, and look at this face. Look, look. Let me zoom in. Let me zoom in. Are you sure you are? You did. You did not work in the theater before. He have, I think, three, four screens, and he is reading from there. You know, this guy. He keep looking left and right. He's reading. Look at this. How cute. So Muhammad, nobody flee from him. Okay, let us go to the hadith. Oh, shall we go to the Quran or the Hadith? Is it Muhammad, he says, I was victorious by terror from a distance of one month journey? He is a scary bastard who people run away from him from a distance of one month journey. And he said, he just said, the Bible says, he is a person who his voice don't go high. He don't, he's very nice and very gentle, so people will not flee away from him. So you stupid idiot son of Muta. Excuse me for the language. As I thought Muta is a good word, right? Most of them say it's a marriage. So as long as it's a marriage, you are a son of marriage based on this. Listen carefully. Isn't it your stupid Quran saying that the Jews, they flee from Muhammad? And even your stupid God, he did not understand why the Jews, they destroy the head of the door or the side of the door of their houses. It is he who get out the unbelievers. From who? From the people of the book. From their homes. Okay. I thought they would not to flee. You just said they will not flee. Everybody flee from Muhammad. Even his family, they don't want him. And here it says, they destroy their dwellings by their own hands. The stupid Muhammad could not understand. Why the Jews, when they left, they took from the side of their door you know, they destroy the door because simply there is a there is a piece of rock. They write on it a verse from the Bible, from the Old Testament, that like you, Israel, your God is one. So the stupid Muhammad saying that well, the Jews, why they are destroying their houses? <laughs> Wherever they go, when a Jew he he take the he leave the house, he don't care for the house, he care for that rock, because in the new house he will put it there too. It's a sign in the top of every. Jewish house. 
So the Sri Muhammad, he could not understand why they are doing that, but for sure, sure somebody who have little education, he will know. But as he said, his prophet was a Gentile, and he is Ummi, he is illiterate. Illiterate in the meaning he know nothing about God. And this is why, you know, if we go back, we will see that uh, a person like this guy who claimed to be a sheikh, a sheikh, a sheikh, uh, uh, Uthman, he said that Muhammad was from the pagan. You know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Honest mention. The people of Mecca, they were pagan. The people of Mecca, they were pagan. He himself, he is not from the Abrahamic faith. All of this prove that the Muslim choice of Isaiah 42 is absolutely a fraud because this person is already a servant of God. This person is already a believer in the true God, not somebody later will believe. He was named servant. He was not named a pagan. So he was a servant, he will bring the divine religion or believe to the pagan, but he is not a pagan. Do you see how silly they are? This is Isaiah 42. He arrived now to verse number two. <laughs> so he will not raise his voice in the street. He will not lift up. He will not, he will not even break a branch of tree. He will not burn a tree. So this person is already a servant of God. Muhammad, all his life, he is a pagan. And actually, after Islam, he is a pagan too, because still they believe in the same God. So if we go to the Hadith, I'm not going to waste my time with this donkey. We will find Muhammad, he is burning. This person is not only sick, he killed his enemy, he even burned trees. Do you see it? He even burned trees. And the funny thing, this guy too in the video, we will not play it all of it because they might claim a copyright over it. He said that the prophet, he was protected. The funny is, all of us, we knew that Muhammad died by poison, which a woman, she is Jewish woman, she bought from Home Depot for rats. So Muhammad, he killed, Muhammad, he raped, he, Muhammad, he did everything. And then he says to you later, he will say, well, you know what? Uh, 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 the Christian, they might say, well, this is against what the verse he was saying. And then he say, well, Moses, he killed 3,000 people. Abdul, stupid idiot. Why you jump to Moses? Do the Christians say that this is this is this prophecy is about Moses? You see how stupid how silly you are. So Moses he killed the three thousand people. The Quran says that he should kill them all. And who said that this verse or this chapter is about Moses? Why you are mixing things up? So they cannot make it fit with Muhammad. They jump to talk about Moses. <laughs> so my friends, we made tons of videos refuting those garbage. But as you see, I mean, it's silly. This guy is a child molester. First of all, should we ask ourselves if he's a prophet? Let us say, and why, by the way, there's an important question when Muslims they say to you this about Muhammad in the Bible. Tell them where, why Muhammad did not say, open Isaiah 42 and you will see speaking about me. Is this a good question? How come the stupid Muhammad, are you Muslim saying to us, Muhammad is so idiot, so stupid, so donkey, to the point he do not know that Isaiah speak about him at you Muslim knows? Why Muhammad, when he sat with the Jews and he lived between the Jews, he never said to them, open Isaiah 42. Let us read it together. It's about me.
Are we following? So what the Muslims are giving us a message that we need to help our prophet to find himself in the Bible. Our prophet is a certified donkey and he cannot understand. He do not know. We know. The prophet do not know. The prophet is an idiot. He do not know that the Bible is speaking about him. And hold on. You know, they will say to you, no, the, the Quran says they will find in the book. Shouldn't you say which verse in the book? I mean, what kind of argument to say you will find about me in your book? Shouldn't you say where in the book? And man, the Jewish, they corrupted their book, but they kept only that chapter. That's it. The whole book is corrupted. This chapter is about Muhammad. It's a very silly argument, very stupid. But I want to show you something. I found a video about this guy from this guy. Here, he speak about the satanic verses. And I will show you how Muslim themselves, those who you know attack Christianity, they are really our biggest help to make Muslims leave Islam. Go Abdul. This will tell me the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, violates Deuteronomy 18:20. So what does Deuteronomy 18? My friend, your Quran, your 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 prophet is that the prophet he violate everything. He's a child molester. He's a rapist. He's a thief. He went to his own son, he flirted with the wife when the husband was not there and he was sleeping with her already. Your prophet, he worship different God. Your prophet, he is a black stone kisser. Your prophet, he pray in different direction. Your prophet, his God have different name. Your prophet, his God is not a spirit. Your prophet, have, your prophet God have different nature. So, what an idiot. Even the, as long as you believe in uh, uh, Isaiah, do you believe in Elohim? Elohim mean gods, don't mean God. Why the God of the Jews, he used the word gods, describing himself? Why your Quran never used the word Elohim? Never heard of it? Twenty say, it says, but the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. Okay, so what are they talking about with this verse? They're talking about the story of the satanic verses, uh -huh. right? Uh, right? Of course, so this was a phrase that was coined by you know Scottish Orientalist William Muir. Muslim scholars refer to it as Qissatul Gharanik or something like that. Abdul, let me teach you Arabic. Qissatul Gharaniq. Gharaniq. May Allah Arnuq you. Continue. But, but as you know, uh, Christian, Christian apologists, they love this story. Yeah, we right? love it. They, they think it's the greatest thing since the book of Galatians, right? And the other guy, he love. <laughs> the other guy, he love. Whatever this guy, he say, this guy, he support. Like, wow, love. <laughs> oh, you know, he's the joker, like the, the, the blonde guy. <laughs> oh, he, he. <laughs> what a whore. <laughs> they, think, they think it's the greatest thing since sliced, sliced bread at Holy Communion. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, 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 so as you are making fun of the Holy Communion, you idiot. Isn't it your God who sent seven sandwiches to Jesus in the Quran? And you have a chapter in the Quran about it. It's called the chapter of the table al Maida. <laughs> Allah Himself, He gave a bread to Jesus and His followers. <laughs> the biggest commun communion ever. Seven whales, each one of them in a big loaf of a bread. <laughs> as the story goes and there and there are multiple contradictory versions of uh -huh. the story okay yeah you know when when the prophet was in mecca he was reciting surah to najm okay and he recited mm -hmm. have you not seen these three alat and al-uzza and manat okay these were considered to be goddesses among the the, the pagans mm -hmm. and then satan apparently whispered two false verses to the prophet which he thought were divine revelation 
وتلك الغرانيق العليا وإن شفاعة تلك الغرانيق العليا This is a scholar, supposedly. تلك الغرانيق العليا Hey Muslim, did you hear it? If a Christian prince is the one who said that, the Muslim, they will make a drama about it. تلك الغرانيق العليا العليا العلا يا ايديت العلا العليا you are so cute I wish I can grow someone like you in my yard but I don't think that government will allow me yeah continue let us see satanic verses the Turtaja, um, mm. and eventually the mm. Prophet, the Muslims, and all of the idolaters prostrated. Okay. Word then spread that the Prophet had compromised with the idolaters. Hey, Abdul Liar, they did not prostrate only. Your Prophet, he prostrate with them. Continue. And everything just sort of got along, but then Gabriel informed the Prophet of what and those verses were removed from the Quran. So that's sort of the basic story. Now, Christians, mm. they point out that this story of the satanic verses, it must be true because it fulfills the criterion of embarrassment, right? So they say, so so why true? would a Muslim invent a story? Why would a Muslim invent a story that embarrasses the prophet? It must be true. So I personally agree with Imam al-Razi about this story. Okay. okay. What he said. Imam al-Razi, he said that this story not only clashes with the Quran and the Sunnah, but also clashes with reason. Uh, you stupid idiot. How it's going to clash from the Quran? If you just say it, Allah will remove it. <laughs> if it's not true, uh, by the way, the Razi is the one who support your prophet about the sperm is coming from uh, one of your prophet. He says that uh, uh, chapter 86, verse number 6 and 7, it says the sperm come from the backbone of the man and the ribs of the woman. A Razi, he support your prophet and he claim that the sperm of the man is coming from his brain. <laughs> and the reason, because the cells of the brain look like a baby. <laughs> you choose a Razi, you idiot. I mean, from all the donkeys in the world, you could not find somebody except a Razi. But look what happened. He said he speak like he don't believe in this story, but the Quran confirmed the story. He said that the Quran have a clashes with it, but the Quran saying Allah will remove it. So if Allah, why Allah will remove something is not there? Uh, this is not the verse. Hold on. Why Allah will, will remove, <laughs> sorry, I clicked at the wrong one. Why Allah will remove something, even the Quran says shaitan, he throw in his vanity a desire. The verse says that. And this guy is saying, <laughs> he said, this is not a true. <laughs> oh boy. This is not true, brother. The story here, it doesn't, it's not a true. But the Quran confirmed it. The Quran confirmed that Muhammad he received a satanic verses. Otherwise, why the Quran saying so? And not only that, the Quran saying it clearly that shaitan throw it, Allah will take it off. And now I challenge you to tell me what Allah take off or took off. And what is our guarantee that this verse itself is not made by shaitan? Because if shaitan was able To put satanic verses in the mouth of Muhammad, he can put this one too. This guy, he said in the beginning of his video, that Allah, he protected Muhammad, Asimuka. Allah, he said, I protect you. But as you see, he did not. Because protection will not happen after the disaster. Did Allah protect him from shaitan did allah protect muhammad from the poison were the women she poisoned muhammad by home depot poison for rats so when he said allah protected muhammad and he promised him that additional proof that this is a fraud this is a fraud
Now, when he go and he say, uh, this is why Arazi, so, you know, Arazi is your witness. And Arazi, he said, this is conflict the Quran. Shouldn't you give us why? Why it conflict the Quran? How it can conflict the Quran when the Quran say clearly that Allah will take what shaitan he throw. Hmm? Very embarrassing, very silly, and very deceiving. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Anyone? And if we go to Al Razi, and this is Al Razi in the front of us, it says here that when the Prophet was reciting the chapter of Al Najm, when Najmu Ida Hawa, and here we need to ask ourselves, what kind of God he swear by God he swear by a star? And since when the stars fell down, fell down where in the earth? So the silly Muhammad. Because he is extremely silly, claiming that God is speaking, he made a stupid mistake again as usual. Because simply stars don't fail down on the earth. This is a metaphor. And Muhammad, he think it's a star. In the top of that, as long we are talking about pagan and believers, is it this is a proof that Allah is Muhammad the pagan? Because why Allah will store, will, will swear by a star? You see, uh, always we swear by something. If somebody want to take an oath, you take an oath by something higher than you, more important than you, extremely valuable for you. But a God, he swear by a star, why? And actually, if we read this chapter here, you will see this chapter is a disaster, proving again that Isaiah cannot be about such a stupid prophet. Why? Because this prophet, he claimed that Allah, he said to him, Allah, he said to him, by the star, I swear when it goes down. Why? Allah need to swear by the stars to confirm something. And then he says, your companion neither astray nor being misled. Who is this companion? Muhammad but this verse is coming to Muhammad why Allah is saying your companion if he's talking to Muhammad nor does he say out but his own desire so Muhammad don't speak anything except from his desire but we just heard him saying that Muhammad he receives satanic verses the same chapter you know, you see the Muslims, by the way, when when we see this uh, chapter here, doesn't mean that this chapter, all of it came together, you know, but the Muslims, they claim things, which is very funny. If you go to, there's there's a, a website show you uh, something called uh, Quran according to Revelation. So you will see that the Muslim, they say to you, this verse came here, this verse came there, and then the Muslim, they added to, they put it wherever they want. This is why the Quran is mixed up. But if you continue here with me reading, when it says that this is nothing but inspiration, but Muhammad never received, received inspiration. Muhammad, he received delivery. Inspiration, if God inspire me in my head, not if somebody come to my door and squeeze me three times, that is not inspiration, that is Amazon delivery. So even the words Muhammad he is using Proving that he is an idiot, he is not even good in Arabic. His sentence is broken, and the meaning is so stupid. 
obviously Muhammad do not know what inspiration mean at least in the value or the standard of belief because if you believe that inspiration that it is somebody delivering to you literally to your house by coming to you as a man and that is inspiration that is a stupid that will be called maybe I can say this is a revelation God he revealed to Muhammad something through his angel I will let it go but this is not inspiration I can say I was inspired by this person which means he gave me ideas but he did not come to me and tell me do this and that. So as long as he, he received a, a, a squeezing machine, his name is Jibreel, he came to him as a, a as a grandizer, he squeezed him a tray time and Muhammad do not know why and Muslim do not know why, because why you are squeezing the guy who do not know what the, what the point? And why you are saying to him read if the guy cannot read? Who is the stupid here, the angel or Allah or Muhammad? One of them is a stupid, I say the three.